Haiti, it is a land of many possibilities. Its history is made up of triumphs, struggles, and tears. A land bare of sustainable vegetation and water, unfit to drink on a daily basis. As I sit here as an ethnic Haitian, I reflect on my people with hope in their hearts, desiring to become one with us. A solidarity between you and me and the people of this precious world. For all my life, I've been surrounded by Haitian culture, but never truly connected with my people as a whole. My parents came to the United States in the 1990s, and my true connection with Haiti suffered. Growing up in America, I've only recently begun to understand the true meaning of la union de la force, which means the union is strength. With questions spinning around in my mind, I was lucky enough to be introduced to a student organization on the campus of Eastern Illinois University known as the Haiti Connection. For over 20 years, the Haiti Connection has assisted with a number of initiatives in Haiti with the purpose of walking in solidarity with the Haitian people. It was through my own interactions and participation within the Haiti Connection that I, too, have come to understand what it means to walk in solidarity with people. To become one with the Haitian people, we must learn what the connection is. The connection cannot simply be to go and be with them, but to experience what the Haitian people experience day to day. The connection occurs when you return home and reflect on your own life in sync with the Haitian experience. At that moment, you, just as I have, will become part of that solidarity that helps us understand who we are in this vast world around us. Following this intro, we will dive into the various projects of the Haiti Connection in more depth. You will hear additional testimonials from Haiti Connection alum and people of Haiti who have had experiences with the Haiti Connection. We will also hear from experts from the Eastern Illinois University academic community in regards to the importance of education, clean water, and deforestation. Come and join me on this journey of discovery as I introduce you to the individuals who have helped me connect to the solidarity that is Haiti, a people rich in heart and a land rich with promise. I personally want to welcome everyone who's seen this video series on uh, that will help to draw attention to uh, the, and inform and engage our, our viewers and to the lives of the Haitian people uh, in a way that uh, not only uh, shows you the beauty and the depth of, of them as people and their culture, but also the difficulties, the, the, the difficulties that they encounter every day of their lives. But we want this series to be about hope. The hope, a spoiler. That, uh, that comes from uh, people walking together, huh? both us here in the United States and our Haitian brothers and sisters, uh, that we're walking together and, and trying to find solutions to these problems. And that's what this series is about. It's about presenting the, the, the problems, sure, and the difficulties, but that they're not insurmountable because we have this relationship. We have built these avenues for change that, uh, that help us to understand that Haiti is a country rich, rich beyond our imaginations. When sometimes too often what we hear is Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. That's what you always hear tagged alongside of it. But that doesn't tell you at all about the hope that these beautiful people have to give, to give to the world. And we, in our own small ways, if we stepped upon, as we have stepped upon this path with our Haitian brothers and sisters, have called us to walk in solidarity have called us to seek solutions and to create avenues for change. 
And that's what this series is about. That hope, that solidarity, that change. My involvement in the Haiti Connection has impacted me the most by making me more aware of others, um, others in Haiti as well as others in Sudan and everything else going on in the world. It's, it's really made me think about that more so than I did before. So I guess just makes me more of a global citizen and um, uh, just makes me conscious of what it means to walk in solidarity with our brothers and sisters here, here in the world, um, whether they have as little as they have in Haiti or, or those of us here in the United States, our friends, family, um, and those we see every day. As far as my personal life goes, uh, being involved in the Haiti Connection has just completely changed my life. Um, getting involved in the, in the Haiti Connection um, early on in my college career um, just completely changed my perspective um, on the way that I see the world. Um, and also changed, you know, my path in life and what I want to do. Um, after going to Haiti and being involved in the Haiti Connection, it uh, made me realize um, the way that other people live in the world. And that new perspective just kind of completely changed the way that I look at things. I pretty much feel the same way. My, my worldview was was changed. Um, you hear about people that live in poverty, but um, being in the United States when you're so far removed from that, it doesn't seem real. And when you can see that firsthand, um, it, it becomes more of a reality. So the impact on me was coming back to the United States and I'm more aware of the consumerism that goes on and just makes me more conscientious of the choices that I make um, in my own daily life. Yeah, I think after, uh, after seeing the way that people live in, in real poverty, um, kind of makes me want to try to live more simply in my everyday life. Uh, and it changes your priorities, you know, what's important to you. Um, after seeing the way that other people in the world live, you know, in the third world, uh, people can be happy. You realize and, all the things that you don't need in life. You know, yeah, you don't need exactly. that extra stuff, you know, in your life. Yeah, because there's things that are more important um, than the stuff, and, and traveling to the third world really makes you realize that. I would say that my involvement in Haiti Connection in the past three years has, not only has it helped me um, get to meet new people who are interested in doing service work and helping others, but it's been a really eye-opening experience. Um, I went to Haiti a few years ago and I got to see the projects we do and the help that we're giving others and just seeing that impact and meeting people and it's just really great experience and it's brought me closer to getting to do more service work and helping others and changing my life. The Haiti Connection has had a bigger impact than I think probably any of us realize. Understanding that there are people in Haiti who they see are <laughs> our advisor Roy, they see him walk in and they they just light up because they know that for over 20 years now Roy's been doing great things down in Haiti and things that are sustainable and things that actually help people, that, that give people a hand up instead of a hand out. A lot of times, and no disrespect to any organizations that go down there and want to do good works, but they just hand out bags and bags of rice. But it's not, it's not helping people much in the long term if all you're doing is, is throwing money at the situation or throwing food their way. Because while that helps them in the short term, it doesn't really help them to understand kind of what they need to do in order to get themselves out of this cycle of poverty. But what the Haiti Connection does is it really 
walks with the people that we're trying to serve. So we try to understand where they're coming from. We're trying to understand what are the barriers that they need to break through or climb over or run around or whatever to try and get themselves in a better spot. And we don't want it to be an issue where, you know, us Blancs uh, have to be down there all the time to try and help them out. It needs to be a situation where the Haitians, where the Haitian people can actually do the work themselves to get themselves out of this poverty. That's, that's really what the Haiti Connection does. It, we, we bring life to people. We bring life to a situation where it's been dead for so long. Again, it's not just a handout, it's a hand up. In 1989, six students from Eastern Illinois University, a faculty professor and myself, sat down and began to talk about issues of justice and peace. As part of that, we brought in a man who'd worked for the Peace Corps for uh, a year in Haiti, two years in Haiti, I'm sorry. Rex Rund was his name. We brought, he was back on campus getting his master's. He went there after he graduated from Eastern. We, we had sponsored him on campus, Peace Corps Man of the Year, Region 7, the Caribbean and he spoke about his work in Haiti for the two years he had been there. The only people that showed up after we'd done all this publicity were the six students, the faculty member, and myself to hear him speak. And yet that one hour he spent with us has put us on a path that, and we've never looked back. He uh, shared with us the power of the Haitian people in their lives and by the time he got done, the students looked at me the minute he got done showing us the slides. Students turned to me and they said, we gotta go. And one thing I love about college students is that energy, that idealism, that desire to make a difference where they are. They looked at me and said, let's go. And I said, okay, let's go. And we did. We went in August of 1989 and we have never looked back. That path, it's often said, you allow the Haitian people to enter into your heart and you're transformed forever. And they're right. They are right. You, you carry a piece of Haiti with you for, for the rest of your lives. And it has everything to do with the people. And they're proud. They are such a proud, marvelous people. And we got to engage in that history. And there's a Haitian proverb that says, Piti piti soiseau fénichli. Piti piti soiseau fénichli. Little by little, the bird builds its nest. And that has been the history of the Haiti connection with the people of Haiti. Little by little, we have allowed ourselves to be transformed and we have built a nest together. From every project we've undertaken, whether it be clean water, whether it be education, sponsoring kids in school, uh, starting a sewing center uh, so that kids have someplace to go after and learn a trade, uh, adult literacy through phone cause, whether it be a sponsoring soccer team, um, uh, working with clean water, giving ac access people to, to clean water through Guardian de Lo and Cado de Lo, whether it's uh, giving people access to water through, through cisterns, uh, putting cisterns in throughout the entire community so that people don't have to struggle to find water to drink and to use for their lives. Whether it's been reforestation projects, uh, all these projects have been coming forth from our Haitian brothers and sisters. The one thing we learned as we've been in the history of this is, at first it was like, we're gonna go and do for, and we learned over the years, as we've grown old together, these past 20 plus years, is that, no, Haiti knows what it needs. Our brothers and sisters in Haiti know what they need. What they need is people who are willing to walk with them in solidarity, to give them access to those resources that they don't have, and to meet what they want, to reach their own goals. And they've done it. Corn mill project. Uh, talk about building local capacity. Uh, this project with a corn mill that allowed them, these peasant farmers, they knew what they needed. They needed access to somehow to mill the corn so that their people could eat and so that they could provide for their own selves, so they could uh, sell the, the milled corn at the market and provide for their families. And it, this project is one of many projects um, the, that we have done. We've started reforestation projects now where we're, where we're helping Haitians to, to make their land more beautiful. As you can see, the Haiti Connection has been doing tremendous work in Haiti for over 20 years. These projects are a step above mere handouts. 
they require an in-depth facilitation of solidarity in order to be executed. Listen as some of the Haiti Connection alum briefly explain the projects that have had the most impact on their lives. Uh, as far as any of the projects in Haiti that we're doing right now, the school sponsorship program is really what excites me the most. With our school sponsorship program, people here in the United States spend a little bit of money to pay for the supplies and the teacher salaries for students in a school in one of our communities that, that we partner with. And what's the coolest thing about this is it's actually kind of a co-op project because the parents of the students still have to pay for them to get uniforms for school, but us back here in the States, we uh, pay for everything else as far as like supplies and again, the teacher salaries. And it really creates a partnership between the parents and the school and the sponsors back here in the States and the Haiti Connection. And the sponsors write letters to their students and the students write letters back. So there's a real relationship going on between the sponsor and the student, as opposed to just, you know, oh, I'm throwing money at kind of a nameless face or whatever. And the water projects are really great. I mean, you know, water is what sustains life and the Haiti Connection provides that to people who don't have it. You know, that's one of the things that we really take for granted here in the U.S. and, you know, in any real developed countries is that you have water on tap. We've got water fountains out in the hallway and water coming out of our faucets. Um, but in some countries, people just don't have access to that. You, know, you can get sick from drinking the water because it's dirty um, or just not have it. You know, some people have to travel every day and carry buckets on their heads to just to have drinking water. And by providing people with access to clean drinking water, um, I think that's really cool. And I think it's, uh, I think it's a, a great gift that the Haiti Connection is able to provide to, to people and to families. Those things are also, you know, very exciting. I um, have gotten really excited about um, the Haiti Connections work with Fancose, which is a micro lending organization. Um, based off of a project that was originally started in India. Um, the man that came up with the project idea won the Nobel Prize um, for his work with micro lending. And what excites me is our work with this organization will ensure a longer lasting impact if something were to happen to the Haiti Connection. Um, bon Jose really uh, gives the people of Haiti a chance to start their own businesses. And actually, Fon Cose has become the um, largest leading provider of adult literacy programs in Haiti um, because as they realized um, what is needed to start a successful business is to have basic literacy skills. So um, I think it's really exciting for when people can help themselves and people in Haiti are very hardworking and you know this is something that they want to be able to do too. So um, I was really excited to be a part of um, helping upset up branch offices um, in Haiti. So that was something that I get excited about. Yeah, I think Funk Jose is an organization that's in the same vein as the Haiti Connection in that they try to develop relationships with people and uh, try to work with them on a deeper level. Um, than just a financial stimulus. Mm -hmm. You know, they try to, to teach them um, on several different levels, right? I mean, there's there's health, there's literacy, mm -hmm. um, financial exactly. education. And after even the floods and earthquakes, um, Bon Jose waived the existing balances of people that weren't, you know, because of the natural disasters, we're not going to be able to pay their balance of what they owed, and so they just waived that. That's not something a bank would do in the United States. Right. They're not a normal bank. They're more than that. They're really um, have the the hearts and minds of the Haitian people, and you know, involved. I think for me, the project that I'm most excited about in Haiti is our reforestation project. We uh, we just started that this this past uh, December. Um, working with our, our project supervisor, Rodrique, who, who also works with our, our God Yen Blow Water program. Um, meeting Rodrique in December was just amazing because I've never seen somebody more passionate about trees. And it's kind of an odd thing to be so excited about, but he really does love trees. And his vision of Haiti is 
is just a green Haiti, which it's, it's, Haiti's never gonna be restored all the way to where it was um, in the past, but, but our dream is that we can, we can put green hats, we can, we can cover the mountaintops with, with little forests, and, uh, and that, if, if nothing else, it'll, it'll be something. And I think we've got, we've got a good start working with Rodrigue and working in the schools to get the kids knowing about the importance of trees and the importance of respecting nature. And, and, and starting that, that generational awareness, I think, is gonna be really important. Because it's one thing to just bring a bunch of trees or plant a bunch of trees, but if the people and the kids don't respect them, they're just gonna get cut down and the cycle's gonna keep repeating itself. So I think the educational part is, is the most important and, and we've got something good going on with that. The one that actually gets me the most excited whenever I think about it is actually the construction or the rebuilding of homes. A lot of people aren't aware that even prior to the earthquake of January 2010, there were a lot of people who were living in very poor substandard housing conditions. People who, especially in the remote mountain regions, lived with what we call thatch roofs, which are nothing more than a few palm leaves over the top of their head and on dirt floors. And my first trip back in December of 2006, I had the opportunity to see one of the new homes that the Haiti Connection had raised money for to build for a family. And it had a tent roof and what they call glossy floors or concrete floors. So not only did they have a dry dwelling, dry living conditions whenever the rains came, they could also set their children on the floor and not have to worry about any of the diseases or dirt that they'd pick up and cause them illness. But in addition, it's a much more far-reaching effect. Instead of a family having to think about how am I gonna fix my roof or make the decision between fixing that home and having to pay for their child's education, they don't have to worry about it anymore. They can pay for their child's education or they can save some of that money back in the case of one of them who needs medical treatment or if they need uh, anything else to be able to sustain them in their lives. Um, these projects, all of these projects are about developing people. One thing that has happened over the, the past 20 plus years is that we've recognized that our steps are steps of solidarity that are about building together uh, 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 people. Um, allowing them to, 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 to chart their own course. They don't need us to do for them, they need us to walk with them, and that's what we have learned. Along the way, we've had missteps. Along the way, we have learned, and, and we have grown together in our solidarity. I, um, we've, some people have asked us, are you political in what you do when you're in Haiti? And I, my response always is, the minute you stand for the poor, the minute you walk with our, our brothers and sisters in Haiti, whether it was after the earthquake or after the hurricanes, whether it's whether you start asking, the, you ask the, start asking the hard questions, why is Haiti so poor? You're making a statement that is going to be judged as political. But the reality is, it's really a statement of solidarity. It's really a statement of relationships. We've come to hold Haiti in our heart. Um, there's a, there's a, something that we're always here when we go to Haiti. Always we hear this. Always, always, always. Um, they say, you are home now. You're, you are home now. And we realize we are. We realize we are home. The hospitality we experience, we would be embarrassed by what, how we treat each other here in the United States. People who have nothing give us what little they have when we come to visit. How in, it's humbling, it is so humbling that these, these relationships we've built in these communities up in the mountains in Barasan, Royani, Yati, and, and, and Fonferet, now our work up in Guamon and De Cossier, um, it is humbling our steps with our Haitian brothers and sisters, the hospitality that they give to us and show with us. And with each new project, it's not just about projects, it's not just about uh, creating a, a lake now so that farmers can have access to fish and irrigation, uh, one of our newest projects. Huh? It's really about how do we develop people? How do we help them to reach their next good place where they can provide for themselves? And that's what our, re our steps have really been about. 
our steps of solidarity have allowed us over these years, over these last couple decades, to realize our real impact with Haiti has been in our relationships that have helped us to recognize that we are one people in this world of ours. And we have to walk in solidarity. We have to ask, why are people so poor? So all the projects we've done back here to raise funds, whether that's the hunger banquet or the run walk for nonviolence or our tabling that we do to raise aware, issues of awareness about sweatshop labor that's being used in Haiti um, or it's our, 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 um, our raising money for, uh, through dinners and uh, um, yard sales and uh, um, uh, fundraising appeals that have made it possible for us to open a branch office for microcredit lending or to, uh, to start uh, a sponsor a camp in Haiti, Can Claudine, for 225 kids in the summer so they have some place to go uh, to have a meal every day and, and to learn some skills and, and all those projects we've done and all the leaf raking, I mean raking leaves here in the United States so that we can raise a couple thousand dollars so that we can put on a camp for kids in Haiti or build two cisterns for, for, for two families to have clean drinking water, access to clean drinking water for life. All of that only makes sense because of this solidarity. And that's what's made all the difference for us in these, 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 uh, these, uh, the, over these years. And as I grow older, I realize uh, the Haiti connection is probably the thing I'm most proud of. The most impact that I, I think that's happened. And for me as a churchman, uh, I know the hand of God has been with this every step of the way. I'd be remiss if I didn't. I should have started with that in many ways. It's the hand of God that's been a step every step of the way here with us. Uh, um, that has that is probably uh, I know that we can't go, we can't go wrong. Uh, bon die bon. We have a good God, and, and he's, he's made all the difference for us, this, 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 our steps. Uh, and as our Haitian brothers and sisters say to us all the time, it is God that brought you here. It's so humbling when we hear that. They go, we have no doubt. We have no doubt. You may doubt. We have no doubt. It's God that brought you here. It's God that brought you here. And there's oftentimes, there's one thing that we were told once by, by someone in Haiti. They said to us, they go, you know what? You don't know why you're here. He said, this guy said this, you don't know why you're here. And I don't want you to tell us. I don't want you to tell me why you think you're, why you're here. He goes, you'll discover that when you go back to the United States. And in these 20 years, I think we've begun to understand that. We've discovered why we are called to Haiti. We've discovered that it's about our walk that allows people to be empowered and to live their lives as God calls us to live our lives. And so all the work that we do here all the leaves we've raked, all the hunger banquets we've put on, all the water for life uh, change things we've done, all the, the, uh, the yard sales we've done, has everything to do with becoming avenues for change and being conduits for grace at work in this world of ours. And that has been a blessing. Amen.